Son of Adam, Son of Heaven, given as a ransom, reconciling God to man, Christ our mighty champion. What a Savior, what a friend, what a glorious mystery, once a baby. In Bethlehem, and now the Lord of history. Good morning. morning. Welcome to new visitors and to old friends alike. We are a congregation of the United Church of Christ, seeking to follow Jesus by loving God with our whole selves and our neighbors as ourselves. And one last final plug: we have Wednesday gatherings at six o'clock. We eat and we do a program. This month's program is on creativity, uh, which is part of worship. You'll be seeing part of the video for that series. Come and join us. Uh, We'll be reflecting on creativity and talking about that as a healing presence in our lives and also doing some creative activity. Let us pray. Let us invoke and listen for God's still speaking voice in this holy sanctuary. Holy God, we gather as your people listening for you. We invite you into our lives, transforming us in this new year of possibilities, a new year of beginnings and new understandings. Be with us. Flow through us out into the world. Amen. And let us stand as we sing brightest and best. morning. Please join in the epiphany responsive prayer. In my times of greatest self-doubt, whenever I torment myself, God, grant me new understanding. Whenever my mistakes loom large or the future seems bleak, God, grant me new understanding. Whenever my ego ignores reason, when immediacy dictates my every decision. God, grant me new understanding. Whenever I am patient with injustice, when I look to others to do the work that is mine. God, grant me new understanding. Whenever I deny the worth of others or ignore my worth to God. God, grant me new understanding. Whenever I allow stereotypes to shape my beliefs or allow my ignorance to cause harm to others, God, grant me new understanding. Whenever overwhelmed and frustrated, I say nothing can be done because the problem seems too big for me alone, God, grant me new understanding. Whenever I lack the courage to change my direction or participate in creating new life around me, God, grant me new understanding. Whenever I rush to judgment, whenever I value law over grace, God, grant me new understanding to understand, new understanding to honor what is true, to value myself while trusting others, and to always place my hope in you. God, grant me new understanding. Amen.
Forgiven and forgiving, let us share the sign of Christ. Peace with one another. Peace with you. Hey, my youngest friends want to come on up? We're going to watch a little video on the screens here. And this is a book, one of my favorite books. God's Dream by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Douglas Carlton Abrams. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high? or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or about being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon, we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another. We wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me. Even if we have different mommies and daddies or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller. Even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It is really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring as easy as holding, playing, laughing, as easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you the end. Can we say a little prayer and then you're going to go off to Sunday school? Thank you for being so quiet and so patient for the story. You're going to be talking about God's dream in Sunday school. So Holy God, we give you thanks for your dreams for us and for us learning how to dream with you. Amen.
bring our prayers and our great joys to share with one another and to lift up to God. We have many prayers, many hurts, many joys. Let's us take a few moments of silent prayer, lift them up to God. Holy God, in this season of Epiphany, we pray for new beginnings, for new possibilities of healing and wholeness, for loved ones and people in our community, for world leaders, for peace, for the poor and the oppressed. We lift up our prayers now, even as we will remember and continue to pray throughout the coming week. Let us join together in one voice as we pray, Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those not in temptation, deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. We have two, very sh two short video clips today. One connects to last week's service on art as healing, and the other one is about amnesia therapy. Show me annoyed, show me in your face and your body, annoyed. These first graders are learning how to act and also how to express their emotions. Theater is the epitome of self-expression, like you cannot act without any self-expression. Andrea Belser uses theatrics to engage the students okay, and reinforce ways to respond to various feelings. Beautiful. Ask me, why am I angry? Why am I angry? Okay, so now you know what anger is, and you know what makes you angry, but let's start thinking about the choices we make when we're angry. 
The lesson is practical, particularly when students experience difficulties at home. Sometimes they may come in with certain issues and things that they are experiencing, and if we don't deal with those, it makes learning difficult, it makes being able to grasp concepts difficult. So um, very important for us to set the day. Harvey Rice is one of a few schools in the Cleveland District using the arts to help students with stress or trauma. The project, Students Are Free to Express, is a partnership with Metro Health System. Doctors who had been screening high school students were concerned by how many were feeling anxious, depressed, or suicidal. CDC health data also showed trouble. Cleveland had the highest rate in the country of students endorsing sadness and hopelessness as well as suicidality. 20% of CMSD high school students reported that they had attempted to take their own lives within the last year, and that was in the 2015 data cycle. For me, art Art plays the role of amnesia therapy. So amnesiacs have amnesia as a result of physical trauma or emotional trauma. And to come out of, a, of amnesia to be in a post-amnesiatic state, the amnesiac has to go through amnesia therapy. So sometimes that amnesia therapy can be musical therapy. Um, they'll bring a song that the amnesiac loved to the table to listen to over and over again to help them remember other things that's connected to that particular person's life. It can be journal therapy. It could be an amnesiac just doing some free form writing to write themselves clear, um, to write their memories um, back to them. So I think that humanity experiences so much physical and emotional trauma from one generation to the next. But art is the amnesia therapy that allows us to remember love sometimes lost in pain, to remember our humanity sometimes lost in the horror of uh, some of the worst things that can happen in the world. And so the role of art is to remind people of, of the things that they love that they once forgot. You look at a beautiful piece of artwork and you remember love again. You, you read a beautiful poem and you remember hope again. You hear a beautiful song and, and you remember relationship, union, and, and beauty, and grace, and, 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 uh, gr and wholeness. And there's a way in which art um, provides therapy for the sin sick soul that is traumatized by everyday life. If you want to see the rest of that video, join us Wednesday. So today, I have a picture here of uh, Mary and the baby Jesus because uh, I might have shared this with you before. A couple years ago, I got this uh, print of this painting in the mail. It was Advent season, and I had taken it out, and it was sitting in the living room up against the bookshelf, and my youngest daughter, who was four, came up and climbed on my lap, and she saw the painting, and she looked at it, and she looked at me, and she said, is baby Jesus black? Now, my, my response was, of course, was to say that we don't know what exactly Jesus looked like, but, but we all think of Jesus in different ways. We imagine Jesus in different ways. But my minister head, my theological head, was reminded that back in the beginning in the 70s, there were theologians, James, Co James Cone is one of the famous ones, who declared that God is black, that Jesus is black. Not physically, literally black, but that Jesus was a person of color who lived in an occupied land. He must have suffered um, tremendous difficulties, even trauma, because the, the Romans uh, taxed, and that's a nice word for it, uh, they exploited the occupied land, they took away their wealth, even of the poor. 
When the Jewish people tried to push back, there was fierce military response for the Romans, sometimes even genocide, the destruction of entire cities. So during Jesus' lifetime, he must have been suffering traumatic experiences. And of course, we know at the end of his life, he suffered uh, a horrible torture and death, execution. And so, whether or not we think of Jesus as being black, or however we imagine Jesus, we have to remember that part of who he is when we hear the stories of Jesus. And today's story that I'm going to focus on the, of those two is the story of him sitting with sinners and tax collectors. And this is important because Jesus called disciples, he called fishermen, and then he called Levi, or Matthew in the Greek, and he was a tax collector. He was someone who was complicit with the Roman Empire in imposing taxes on the poor of Israel. And yet, Jesus invited him to be a disciple. And he went to uh, Levi's house, and he went and sat with sinners and tax collectors, and he ate with them. And you have this image today in Scripture, where the disciples, they must be standing off to the side. They haven't decided whether or not to sit down with Jesus and the tax collectors. And the scribes of the Pharisees are questioning them about why Jesus is sitting with them. Why is Jesus sitting with these people who are complicit with empire, who are complicit with the destruction of the Jewish people and the Jewish religion? Why is Jesus doing this? And Jesus hears this and responds, I think when I hear this story and thinking about this idea of amnesia therapy, that we think of creativity oftentimes as the arts, of painting or music or poetry, but what Jesus was doing was creating a new kind of community, a new kind of seeing the world. We know that the response from the Jewish people against Rome eventually would have been military. And Rome destroyed the temple. It destroyed most of Judea. Jesus' way was a way of peace, a way of love, a, way, a creative way of envisioning a new kind of community, a new kind of way of being in relationship. And I have to imagine that perhaps this creativity, this willingness to engage with people who were different than him, who perhaps represented his trauma, the trauma of being occupied by the military, this was perhaps a way of Jesus finding healing and giving healing and sharing healing with others, this creative way of being community. And today we saw the example from uh, the Cleveland Public Schools. I heard this on um, NPR on the car radio, and I Googled it, and it was a video. I thought it'd be easier for you to see it than me to explain it. But the trauma that many of our communities experience with gun violence and domestic violence and uh, violence in our communities and world is so great. It said, I don't know if you heard this, but it said that um, the report uh, communicated that 20% of high schoolers in the Cleveland Public Schools reported attempting suicide that past year. So there is this great trauma, this great violence that so many of us have experienced or are experiencing in many different ways, and creativity, and art, and God breaking into our lives in that way is a way of seeking healing and resilience. So that's what we've been talking about in our Wednesday evening programs. Um, art as a way, as our lesson says, a way of remembering love lost in pain. Remembering love and joy and hope even when we have experienced great trauma. 
That's the message that we receive from the gospel this morning. Thanks be to God for God's still speaking voice. I invite our ushers to come forward to receive our offerings as signs and symbols of all the things we have to offer, including healing, including community, including others. Thank you. Dream God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough the world will change when we dream god's dream please join me and stand as we pray this prayer of sharing epiphany god with you every day is an opportunity for new direction may our offerings express this day move us to love ourselves more deeply to honor each other more reverently and to trust you as the source of every new beginning may your light continue to guide us and may every journey be an opportunity for seeking revealing turning and forgiving amen I have an invitation to you if you're interested during the sending music to come forward if you would like and light a candle. This epiphany, this season of God's dreams, of dreaming new dreams. It may be a prayer, it may be a hope, it may be something you have on your heart, but please feel free to come forward and light one of the candle opera candles or one of the candles up front. On the mountain that Jesus Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there rose a holy light and golden telling on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go in peace and love.